Hello, this is Gray Hughes of Gray Hughes Investigates on YouTube. Please hit that like button right out of the gate and share and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, make sure to hit that notification bell and then all videos. A reporter named Nick Barris put out a some surveillance footage in the Sebastian Rogers case. Ah, it seems like a couple months ago now. And everybody went wild. Oh, my God, it's somebody with a flashlight running around. It's somebody with a flashlight. Look at that, look at that. You know, it was interesting because you sort of trust what the media is putting out there. You know, what Nick didn't want to tell you is that subject one that he has here, and by the way, law enforcement didn't make this where it says subject one and subject two. That's what the news channel did. Okay, where it says subject one over there on the right, uh, it moves around a little bit because what this video is, is a video of a screen. So somebody's holding a cell phone, for example, and they're filming a screen and their camera's kind of moving around a little bit. You know, it's not on a tripod where it's really still. So these things move around. So subject one isn't a subject, okay? It's a fixed light. Now I communicated with Chris Proudfoot. We communicated uh, via voice on Facebook. And we spent a good 20 minutes or so going over what this was because he knows exactly where this is. And it absolutely makes sense. But before we do that, let's listen to what Nick Barris and one of the investigators uh, had to say. He says the parents continue to fully cooperate. Any evidence of foul play? We have not cleared anyone but we have absolutely no evidence to support foul play. I asked about exclusive home security video obtained from the neighborhood the night Sebastian disappeared. You can see two suspicious light sources, which we've circled here in an area behind the teen's home. Since we first aired the video last month. And you know what's amazing is when you look at this video right here, see this little overlay right here? A YouTuber out there literally claimed that this was it, that, it, that this is the light right over the top of this. And this image right here in the background of this, whoever gave her this image, um, used this exact background image because you can see the, where the lights are down here. This all matches up with this. It's an absolute joke, okay? Uh, then the next day, they actually got uh, some footage from the actual camera and they didn't know what to do with it. <laughs> I mean, it was absolutely shocking. However, they should have realized that when they had the video from the surveillance that it should have absolutely debunked the video that they put out the day before but of course they leave that one up because it's getting good views it's insane you guys so this right here this these dots right here are not um, flying in the air there's no blimp there's no uh, helicopter there's no satellite footage beaming down that somehow a reporter got really quick all right this is inaccurate information that was put out by an irresponsible YouTuber. All right, so here is the, the footage that uh, Nick Barris put out there, and he's claiming that this right here is a, um, a person, all right? So let's get back to this. Home. Since we first aired the video last... But see how it's moving around slightly over here? That's because that's a handheld camera filming a screen. This over here is an object that's moving. Last month, authorities have said... No evidentiary value? It is of no evidentiary value. Can you tell me what those lights are? No. Why? Because the investigation remains ongoing. And so it could play a role down the road depending on developments? We don't know what we don't know. So yes, it could play a role. So as we just heard from one of the investigators right there, that uh, there's no evidentiary value. Now, when I spoke to Chris Proudfoot, he explained to me exactly what is on the video. All right. So let's go down to the location. This is uh, Sebastian Rogers' home, the Proudfoot's home right here. And he explained to me that the shot is from a surveillance camera right here on this building. We spent like 20 minutes. I kept sending him pictures of a map. And he would say, yeah, this one right over here. See that right there? And he would describe everything perfectly for me. So we were able to get it done. And it's, a, it's unfortunate that other YouTubers didn't take the opportunity to talk to Chris Proudfoot in a way without sort of trying to dig in and see if they can find something in there to be accusatory towards him. 
So there's the camera right here. Can you see that? It's filming down, and there's one car that is facing the garage, and then some other cars that are uh, parallel to the house, and a boat, and then this black truck right here. And if you look at the still frame from the actual video itself, see here's those two lights up here, and here's the fixed light over there. Uh, you can see there's a car right here facing the garage and then other cars backed up like that. And that might even be a boat back there, a pickup truck, and another pickup truck. And if you go to Street View again, you can see that that's what happens here. And apparently there's a fixed light on this house over here. Uh, he was saying maybe it's that one, perhaps there's another one up, up here. You know, I don't know. I mean, maybe that's the light there that's also the fixed light. Uh, so don't really know exactly which one it is, but it's on this house. The two lights that you're seeing are up here on a house. Now let me, let's go up in the air on Street View. And it's right here, the house with a square swimming pool. So there's two lights probably in the front here that you can see. And Sebastian Rogers' home is over here. Now there's that one movement that looks like it's go going like this across the screen in the video. So if you go up here... Uh, there is a road up here, and apparently it was a garbage truck that drove down the road, and then right here it has to turn around, so that's why the light went back in the video. Remember, how everybody was like, wow, why did the light go back? That's weird. That's because it's a garbage truck. It came right here, turned around, and drove back, and it comes into the background over here. So if you go down to Street View, way down here, you can kind of see how this plays out. So here's where the camera is. You're right here, and it's kind of filming like this. It's a wide-angle lens, so it picks up more information. So there's a light over here. There are the two lights up in there, and then the pickup truck is driving up there. So you got to realize that you have to go down to, you know, low on the ground so you could see that it would be coming in like this, and it looked like it went right back to, towards the home there. But there's trees in there, so it looks like it goes on and off intermittently. Let's take a look at the uh, street view from 2007. So again, uh, there's no surveillance camera there at that time, but it, they were still using the area for parking a boat and you know cars on the grass and everything. But if you go up here, you can see this is the house. There was no trees in the area at that time because it was a new neighborhood. So on this home right here are those two lights, and then behind there, there's a road uh, back there. But you can see, if you go down here, that that road is basically parallel with the level of the house. You know, because the highest it could be would be up in the trees over here, but it's not. It's right back up in there. There's a road. And so that light, you could see coming on and off. And again, this was in February where there's no leaves on the trees. So you would be able to see through the branches and trees. And if it's really, you know, not a lot of branches, it would look like a continuous light because of the distance. And then sometimes it would go on and off because of a structure or a um, you know, thicker tree, for example. But so that way back up in here is where the dead end is. It kept, kept driving like this. Here's the two lights. And then again, you have to go down to this area. It's hard to mimic exactly because you have to be right underneath here and then looking in that direction. But he explained it to me. It absolutely made sense. Leave me a comment in the comment section what you think. I have no doubt that he's telling you the truth. That's why there's no evidentiary value because it's a garbage truck. Now, they don't know what they don't know, and so they're making that comment because at that time, perhaps that garbage truck is related to something, you know, uh, but likely not at all. So it would be right here, the surveillance shot, the two lights right there, a, a light on this house is a fixed light and then you see way in the background two lights on that house and then up on this road is a uh, garbage truck that turns around goes back this direction and is seen on the video and here's a, an example of that so here's the fixed light on the house uh, way up in the distance so these two lights here could be on like the roof of the house, you know, up on the top. And then this is the pickup truck on the road. And you can really see it on this shot right here because see how the, the height of that 
building is higher than the road would be in the background because of the angle. So if those two lights are up here, then the pickup truck would be lower over here coming in. All right. So I think this absolutely debunks the flashlight story that everybody wants to keep making into something because they, they've run out of content. And so they're just like reanalyzing this flashlight video over and over and over and over again. And um, when you see, start seeing people trying to do overlays as if the lights are from a satellite, you know they've jumped the shark, okay? Um, there is no doubt that it was taken right here at this house. So then you know it's facing that direction. And Chris Proudfoot's story absolutely makes sense. Now he also explained to me uh, the route that the dog took when it had a scent. So I'll put that in here as well. So he said that uh, out the front door, it scented Sebastian. And then, then the dog scented around the house like this. And then back over here where it came out, um, you know, the dog came out on, I think it's called uh, Kellen Lane. So it kind of came right in front of that same house that had the fixed light on it. And then he apparently walked this direction. And then right up here on Devon Court took a right. And then went down this uh, Parkenham Drive. Now the thing is, is all this is way more developed at this point. Because this was a year ago. 4-14-2023. And I think you could actually walk straight through like that. And apparently walked over here. And there's a retention pond right here now. And apparently that's where the tracking stopped you know and i guess it's not really that deep that retention pond so maybe he walked through it and the dogs lost his scent and he went somewhere else maybe he went up this direction uh, we don't really know but uh, law enforcement is apparently going to in the fall when the leaves are off we're going to do another you know deep dive search in the area because at this point uh, the foliage is getting way too thick Kind of reminds you of the Delphi case. The bridge area looks totally different. Also, in the Summer Wells case, very similar. Uh, you know, they had to do a search in the fall because the foliage is way too thick, and uh, it's hard to search in those environments. You you really almost can't do it. It's just the whole day you'd have to be slogging through. But in the fall, you can see through and make your way through the trees, etc. Okay. So those are the little bits of information that Chris Proudfoot shared with me. Uh, he said that I could discuss those on the show. Also, he did pass his polygraph test. You know, the one that Nancy Grace said that she would give him. And the way that went was that he asked law enforcement, should I take the polygraph test with Nancy Grace? And they told him, absolutely not. Okay. So then he said, well, I'll, I can take one from you guys. And he set one up. And he took the polygraph test, and he passed. That's according to him, okay? Um, I think that it's true, however, because why, if you said something like that and you didn't take a polygraph test, law enforcement would know absolutely for certain that you're lying about something, okay? Now, they also told him, they asked him, do you mind if we tell uh, Seth that you passed the lie detector test? And he said, well, let me ask my wife. Um, and then they said, yeah, okay, sure. And they wanted to tell Seth that so he would stop trashing them in the media and insinuating that maybe they have something to do with it. Okay? He passed the lie detector test. So did uh, Katie Proudfoot. Uh, the only person that was inconclusive was Seth because he fell asleep during the important lie detector test. It sort of fits in with him not wanting to have custody even after... He believed that Katie allowed his son to be abused. He still said, I didn't think it was my right. So it kind of fits into that narrative, just sort of like not really going all out. All right. And then people say, well, at least he's over there searching. Well, that's because he has all the love and adulation from all of you guys. All right. The Proudfoots never got to enjoy that courtesy. All right. Well, thank you all very much for watching. Leave me a comment in the comment section. Let me know what you think. And thank you all for watching. And as I always say, 
Until next time, be safe out there. Oh, and hit that like button. Thanks.